Tish and Ebony. It takes a village to raise a child. That quote is from an old African proverb and also a remark from the former First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton at a 1996 speech in the Demo at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. It Takes a Village and Other Things Children Teach Us is also a book that she that came out in 1996 by, the, by Hillary Rodham Clinton. And in this speech, she talked about how important it was for both families and communities to contribute to the well-being of children and their education. I know how that what that means because I, growing up as a child, it took more than just my mother to look after me. It was my aunts, my uncles, the neighbor, and maybe people at the community center that I participated in where I played and have my fun at. And I have related that old saying and what Ms. Clinton was saying in her book to how I feel about the community here at Clover Park Technical College, our village and the way it is contributing to the well-being of the students that attend the college. The students being the children and their education. Today I will talk to you about the employee contact that I was assigned to, the safety meeting that I attended, and the board of trustees meeting that I also attended on campus. The employee contact that I had was Mike Anderson. And he was difficult to get in touch with, and I also had another lady named Karen Alexander. And both of them, I left messages for both of them. They, I assumed they were a little busy, but somebody returned my message, and it was Constance Swanson, and that is Mike's with the reception. That's Mike's receptionist in the safety or in the maintenance building. Now Constance has been with Clover Park for about nine years. She lived, she's here from the Tacoma area, and she even worked at Boeing she, before she worked here at Clover Park. She worked at Boeing as a receptionist, and she kept, she worked where they kept the sketches for the planes, so she'd make sure those were secure. And she enjoyed her job at Boeing, and I think most of all, she enjoyed the pay. But she came, she was laid off, so she, came on to Clover Park Technical College, where she is comfortable at, and she enjoys her her boss and her faculty. She talked to them, and she introduced them to me as family, and that everybody was worked together, and she had a well, a good team. She also gave me some advice. She said to always be myself when I want to be a, a good leader. A good leader always these earth himself. And she also gave me some advice about making eye contact with people within the first five seconds of meeting them. So I'm pretty good at that. Anyway. So Mrs. Swanson, she agreed to meet me in building 19 at 2 o'clock. She invited me to a all hazard safety meeting. And I asked her if I was okay if I brought some classmates along because I like to look out for my fellow classmates and if anyone couldn't find a speech, I was gonna invite them on along with me. She said that it would be okay. So we met Con Constance about two o'clock, building 19, room 109, I believe. And when I, I remember going there, being a little apprehensive about what, what was going to happen and what was going to take place. Were they going to ask questions? And just the fact that I was in the speech with these big wigs. So I said, I entered the, the, the room and they were really polite to us. They offered us a seat in the room. I see familiar faces like Sharon Freeman and I want to say Greg from Building 3. Um, he's a part of the board of committee, or the, the state hazardous board. And the hazardous team, what it is, is it's a team of, it's a group of people that, uh, maybe about 50 people, but only about maybe 15 or so ever show up to the meetings. 
There's a group of about 50 people in there assigned. They're, they all play different, have different tasks among the meeting, and they're assigned to, there's people in there that are assigned to each, uh, each building is assigned a team captain is what I'm trying to say. And they're assigned a team captain and a backup person, and that team captain is supposed to, will be the person you would go to if something was going on, you knew that something was broken or something was unsafe going on in the building or there, maybe there's a light out and it's in a dark area, you may need to address the team, to find out who your team captain is and address them with those type of situations. At the safety meeting, I learned that Gopher Park the people in the safety meeting were concerned about our safety, the concerns, and the improvement of the campus. They were concerned about safety's because safety because they were talking about different just things small as a carpet coming up or um, trips and falls are the most common on campus. Is what I found out. They're concerned about keeping the building captains and making sure that they're on top of things. They're also concerned about improving the alerts to parents because there's a problem with child care, getting the message to child care when there's snow days. Um, the Hayes building here on campus. And I guess parents were showing up and didn't because they didn't receive alert that school campus was closed. So it's kind of hard once you get going and maybe people have to ride the bus during a snow day and then they arrive on campus to find out that the campus is closed. And some ideas that they were throwing out there was, well, maybe they somebody can come in and post signs on the doors or to, to encourage students to sign up for that emergency alert. Um, those were things that were talked about as far as the concerns, those were some of the concerns of the staff. Also, in Building 3, there were some dead zones, some where there's supposed to be safe spots where we're supposed to hide just in case something happened on campus, and those spots were, wasn't receiving cell phone, um, getting the cell, the towers were not reaching, so they weren't getting any signal, cell phone signal. What they wanted to approve on was the, uh, they wanted to update the emergency response plan, which has, which was last, refreshed I believe 2009 and something that came up at the meeting that caught my attention was what time was evening class does anybody know what time evening classes are well you may want to inform the board because they were unaware about of the exact time of evening classes and that is it, it would be helpful to know that because when they're canceling class and they're saying no evening classes well what is evening class you know I've heard 12 o'clock I've heard 3 o'clock I've heard 4 o'clock so they're, they're going to figure out what is evening classes and they were, gonna, they were talking about closing the campus down about 4 o'clock but there were some issues with the high school students and sometimes their classes are from 3 to 5 so they were thinking looking for ways and solutions to deal with that issue The next on-campus speech I attended was in Building 3 in the Rotunda. Mm -hmm. I was invited to this meeting by Gina Hughes in the library, just networking. I said, oh, I'm looking for a speech on class or on campus. Do you know of any speeches? And she said, oh, yeah, there's one tomorrow in the Rotunda. And I, oh, okay, where's the Rotunda at? She said, Building 3, okay, I'm there. I'll be there. I'll see you there, you know. So I was invited there due to the fact that my employee contact had it, nothing available for me at the time. So I attended the speech in the rotunda and when I, as I entered the room, I met this lady, this lady approached me and she, I guess we look like students, like newbies, so she's like, oh, they haven't been here before, let me help them out, <laughs> you know. So she reached out to us and she helped Nancy and I navigate our way through the meeting. The way she did that is she explained exactly what was going on. She sat in between us and we were there, we were available to ask her any questions 
that we needed to ask her during this meeting. So at the time, she told us that this would be the most, this is the most formal speech that they hold on campus, on this campus, and it's a little dry, but you will find out a little information, a lot of information, good information. And I agreed. What I did find out at this speech is that Clover Park is concerned about our education, our support, and it concerned about supporting us, and they're concerned about our future. They're concerned about our education because they want to pay tribute to military students and give them a chance to graduate. Because a lot of people, we have a lot of military students on campus, and sometimes they're sent away and they have, they're not given the opportunity to formally graduate, so they're thinking about giving a, a graduation ceremony for the military, and I thought that was a great idea. There are also uh, Mary Moss, which is a member of the board, she talked about maybe asking businesses around the community for their old computers in order to help students bring the end of their computers into their homes. And I thought that was a good idea too because I know a lot of people on campus that can't afford it, doesn't have a, don't have a computer and can't afford the service. So there was, they were looking for ways to introduce internet in their homes and get, send students home with a computer. They, I felt like Clover Park supports us because they were trying to find ways to help students get through classes. They were looking for solutions to help students so they can avoid dropping out. They know the struggle that students are going through and trying to make a living and we're in balance your home life with your school life and the obstacles that come and present us in our way. And I thought that was helpful because being that they're all big wigs, I'm thinking they don't care about the small people here at Clover Park. They don't care if, you know, how I'm getting, what's going on with me in my life and how I'm, my class is getting paid for. Because at the time my class hadn't been paid, this class wasn't paid for. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm thinking that they didn't care. But honestly, when I went to that meeting, I seen a whole other side and I was glad that that was the truth. That was true. They, Clover Park cares about the future of the students because they're actually building a new, they're building a new schools on campus at the east end of the campus. They're gonna have an intermediate school and also an elementary school. So they've been talking about that and I thought that was awesome. And they're also adding a health and science, science building over here next to building 23 that I know that maybe some of you have seen the construction going underway and so those are ways that Clover Park is trying to expand their future and, and, and take some type of interest in their students' future here on campus, the future of Clover Park. I've shared my experience with you at my campus employee contact, the safety meeting, and the all hazards meeting. According to an article in the Liberal Educational Journal, any form of student involvement will benefit the students' learning and their student development while they're at their, having their college experience. So those are things that we need to keep in mind as being students here on Clover Park. My experience as far as Clover Park Tech College has been an awesome and rewarding experience. I have met some of the most, I don't even know how to say it, some of the most brilliant faculty that I think I've ever come in contact with and some of the greatest peers that I've ever, think that I'll ever meet in my life. So when I think of Clover Park, I think of the faculty or campus as parents and family, our village, the elders who look out for our safety and future. Like parents, the faculty is deeply concerned about our education, safety, and future. And in Hillary's book, she referred to she referred to the village as being always being there for children near or far. 
I can honestly say that Clover Park Technical College has been here for me, my peers, and the community.